500, 5.7 liter Hemi, 384,000 miles on it. This is that engine run. So we're gonna get into taking this thermostat out today in this episode. It's dripping on the bottom. I did the water pump yesterday. So we'll get this thing moved in some shade. Pull this thermostat housing off. Check this thermostat. Clean the surface. Put it back in. See if it stops dripping. If it don't, then we'll go buy a new thermostat. Put it in. Be good to go. First things first, we're gonna take this belt off. That thing's gotta be out of the way. We're gonna take it off right there. Just kinda lay it over the top, and get it out of the way for right here so you can get in there. A lot of traffic on a Monday. Oddly enough, those are gonna be half inch bolts. So, let's see if we can't get in here and get this clamp off of here. Things a pain with that shroud in there, but it's, I mean, it's not, you can, you can deal with it. When we go back together with this, I'm gonna give y'all a little tip that I come to find out with this clamp on these third gens. I haven't done a water pump on my 09, my four gen, so I'm not sure how that works yet. If we ever get around to that, then uh, at that point, we'll address it. There we go, get that hose worked off. Same as on the water pump, you just wiggle that hose, get it to break loose. Just wiggle it around. You gotta understand these things get hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. That rubber seizes to that metal outlet, you know. So in some cases, you gotta get a screwdriver. Don't get crazy and tear your hose up. You just wanna put it under there and kinda break it free. Give it a little something.
I get a little get a little water out of it. We'll get it here in a second, y'all. There it comes. Look at that. Got to kind of work with it a little bit. Get it out of the way. Just fold it up out of the way. The radiator hose. So now you can get in here to your bolts a lot better. We'll get this housing off. Then I'll have to unmount y'all from the truck. We'll go to the garage. I got a little wire wheel we'll clean this thing up like I stated I did the water pump already so we shouldn't have to worry about cleaning the surface on the water pump I just did it yesterday so it's brand new there's one which is gonna get it loose for now Get this other one off. Like so. Come out pretty good once you get that hose out of the way. You can see that housing's already loose, so there's no gasket behind that housing. It's just an O-ring on your thermostat. We're almost there, y'all. We're almost there. All right, we're right at the end there. Is that bottom one? Got it. I always do my bottom one first so the top one will hang and the top one's easier to get to. So you're not sitting there trying to fight that housing, you know, and work your ratchet and get it down in there. It can become a pain that way. Voila, there it is. So like I stated, we'll pull this thermostat out real quick. Gonna lose a little more water. This here looks, this thermostat looks pretty good. That's why I wasn't thinking about replacing it. Just wipe that gasket off. I don't know, you see that right there, them cracks right there? That might be an issue. And then this, I just did this yesterday. This is brand new. All right, so you just kind of wipe that off, man. Get that 
that little gunk on there. I mean, that's brand new right there. So I got to get this camera on fastened from this truck. Get you over to the garage. We'll clean that housing. We'll get going from there. All right, guys. We got y'all out of the truck. I was looking at my thermostat housing. It's the original. I've never replaced it. So I'm going to show you how we clean it up. I already went down, bought me a new thermostat, a new housing. I'll show you why I did after further inspection. So two things I want to note. I'm going to clean the surface with a wire wheel. First things first, don't use gloves. You don't want this thing to catch a glove and then there's your hand. And second, me personally, I don't see holding it like this and having that wire wheel that close to my hand. I just grab me a pair of pliers, bam. I feel a little safer that way. I'm not really worried about this. So we're gonna get into cleaning this a little bit. And then I'll show you why I went down to the auto parts and bought another housing. It's as simple as that with a wire wheel. So before I even started cleaning it, I had that right there. So I knew at that point I needed a new one, but we was gonna go through the process anyway. So this is trash, boom, done deal. This here, I was looking at my thermostat. Now the thermostat's good, but you can't go down and just buy the rubber and look at that rubber. That O-ring is cracking, so that's never gonna hold water. So in that case, I mean, you can keep the thermostat. Maybe for examples, to show you how it works in, a, in boiling water, who knows? For me, it's out of here, it's trash. So one more time, I'm gonna hop up, get y'all strapped back under the hood of the truck. We'll put everything back together, see if it solved the problem. All right, we got y'all strapped up. Let's get it going. First thing first, thermostat. The Murray thermostat, 203 degrees, part number 41603, that's the thermostat. Now I know with this heat that's been around, a lot of people like to run a little cooler thermostat, but the way I truly look at it is that the truck was manufactured to run with a 203 degree thermostat, so that's what I keep in it. And then another side note before we slide this in here, this bleeder valve right here, you see that little that little thing right there? Always install that on the top side. Always put your little bleeder on the top. You want it on the top, right? So it's as simple as that, you slide it in there. Sorry, hit that camera. Get this thermostat housing out. I'll show y'all that brand new. Woo. Thing is beautiful. Look at that thing. So this here, it's also a Murray. Part number 85341. I think the uh the housing here was $21. I think that was 20 bucks. The local auto part. If you need one, you can run down and get it. Luckily with these trucks, man, they keep these parts in stock. So like I stated earlier in the video, these housings do not come with a, a gasket, right? For the surface here. It's just the O-ring on the thermostat right here. That's what seals it. So just like taking it off, I hang it from the top bolt first. I mean, it's the same thing, at least at that point. It'll sit there and hang and you don't have to try to hold it and get up underneath it. That's always a bummer. Get, get our little socket here. Get it started a little bit like so. Beautiful. Get our other one here. 
I mean, it's a really quick, simple job. It's kind of a tight spot. It looks kind of intimidating. It's really not. Well, hell. Drop that bolt. All right, we got that bolt. Got to kind of play with it a little bit. Boom, got it started. We're just gonna get this thing snug, and then we'll run the top one in, then we'll tighten them both down. It's kind of like anything else. With them O-rings, you don't have to get real crazy on them, you just need them tight. If you get real crazy on them, take a chance of stripping that aluminum out, because that water pump's aluminum. Nobody wants to go through that. That's a hundred and, that water pump cost me $122 after taxes. So that seems like that one's pretty much in there. We're gonna do this bottom one. I'm not so sure about that bottom one. That almost felt a little stripped out, y'all. A 
Okay, uh, uh, false pretenses. There it is there, snugged up nice and tight. Double check this one. Tight, everything's tight. Take, a, take your upper radiator hose, slide it back on there nice, snug. Now like I stated earlier in the video, this little tip about this clamp right here. So I've come to realize that the way these clamps are made, once I fight it and get it over here, Tell you what, there's a better way. Let's pull this thing back off. Sorry about that. Get that clamp move before we put that hose on there, right? Now we can get that back on there like so. We ain't gotta go through so much with that clamp. So we'll get that clamp back over there. Now my tip is see where this hose where this clamp is right here if you leave it there your belt runs right here right right next to it so every time you torque that engine you take a chance of hitting that clip and breaking your belt so I've come to realize with these trucks these third gen Hemi Rams you've got one option which is not a good one. Well, it is a good one, but you have to kind of fight it. But you have to get your clamp to roll down underneath, which is kind of a chore, right? So once it's down over here, it clears that belt a lot more. All right, all right, all right. Clean some of this trash up real quick, y'all. We're gonna rewrap this belt. That's the next step. Put this belt back on there. Got my wife out here, she was about to give me a hand, don't even know it. She's joining in on the team. All right, hold that belt for me, please, honey. So it's easier with two people, but it's not impossible with one. Like so. Bam, belt back on. <clears throat> so one more time, I'm gonna unhook y'all from the truck. This time completely. We're gonna get some water in this, see how well it does. All right, everybody. We got you unhooked from the truck for the last time. So we got some water in here. We're gonna start it up. Got a little light set up here so we can see. It was dripping from that bolt you're looking at right there. So here we go. Let's hop in this thing, start it up, see what we got. New housing, new thermostat, new water pump. 
Still waiting on that video to go through right now. So here it goes. Now, I'll show y'all another little tip. I like to put tips in my videos so y'all kind of understand. But for now, let's see what we got. So far, no drip. I know y'all don't want to sit here and wait for the truck to warm up. It hadn't ran at all today, but that first little bit in the video, which was like two minutes. So once it warms up, I'm going to show y'all that little tip I was talking about. Stay tuned. It'll just be a couple of minutes. It's a couple of minutes later. So my little tip about these engines, when you change a the thermostat or even drain the water out, I've come to realize that your initial run, if you watch that temperature gauge on the bottom right hand corner, you'll watch it go past halfway. And then once it opens, it doesn't do it again. There's not another problem. You know, it's like there may be a little bit, it's, it's letting that bleeder valve drain. Like right now it's starting to overflow. That thermostat has to open. So what I do is I just rev it up. It's gonna spew water, you gotta let it spew. You gotta let them good times roll. Watch that gauge. Watch how far up it goes and then it'll open and it'll be good. I go through it every time. See it climbing still? Revving it up. When you rev it up, you're just forcing that hot water against that thermostat. Still going up. Look at that. See that thermostat opened up? See that needle going back down? And that's it. After that, it'll act right the rest of the time. So with that, I'm gonna top it back off and then that'll be that. It's as simple as that. So keep living the dream, doing your thing. That's my video on the thermostat change out. A few little tips in the video. I appreciate y'all watching. Like and subscribe. This is Auto God DIY, rolling out.